thousands of students, aspiring doctors, are suffering because of NEET exams. This time, protests are seen not just in Tamil Nadu, but in Delhi, Haryana, Pune, and many parts of the country. Case after case has been filed in courts against NEET. So this week in Let Me Explain, let's take a look at the new controversies to hit NEET, how it's impacting lakhs of students, and is there no real alternative to NEET in its current form? Let me explain. Twenty point three eight lakh students appeared for NEET this year. NEET or the National Eligibility Come Entrance Exam for the uninitiated is the single entrance examination for anybody who wants to study medicine in India. Medical courses, dental courses, and Ayush courses in any government or private medical college. One of the reasons touted why NEET was introduced was that it'll prevent corruption and bring in fairness. But the leak is exactly the opposite of what it was intended to be. Controversy this year started even before NEET was held on May 5th. There were reports of leaked question papers at at least three centres. The Bihar Police's Economic Offences Unit found that parents paid up to 50 lakhs for leaked papers. That's 50 lakh for a leaked question paper. Can you actually believe it? Well, I can't. By the way, if you have that kind of money, you may consider investing a small bit of it in a paid TNM subscription. You can scan this QR code or just click the link in the description. We've been reporting on how unfair NEET exam is for many years now. Anyway, after all this, 13 arrests were made, including that of parents and students. There was a demand for cancellation or postponing of the exams, but the NTA that is the National Testing Agency which holds these exams, did not budge. They dismissed these allegations as baseless and went ahead with the exams as planned. Another controversy hit the NEET exam with an incorrect physics answer key. This was the controversial question. Students argued that option 2 and 4 were correct for one question. Now here, let me give you a quick example so you understand this better. If I was to ask you, why you should become a pay TNM subscriber and give these as options. One, to support democracy. Two, to support independent journalism. Three, to help Adani. And four, to help corporate media. You'd be confused because the first and the second are right answers. If you choose any of the questions, you won't get a negative marking. But in need, students do. So the students were confused and many skipped the question to avoid losing 5 marks for a wrong answer. This cost them 4 marks instead of 5. But those who attempted the question were later awarded grace marks, even if their answer was wrong. Reason? NTA said their answers were incorrect because of a misleading reference in their old textbook. NTA argued that in India, many students use books that are hand-me-downs and could have referred to the incorrect answer in one of their old textbooks. Many students did not buy this logic and now they're asking the NTA to either drop the question from scoring or give everyone grace marks to make it fair. 13,000 candidates went on to challenge this in court. The NTA's sudden generosity in awarding grace marks does not end here. 1,543 students were given grace marks after delays were reported in six exam centres. Now, this is entirely shrouded in ambiguity. Why? Because the NTA has not clarified what caused these delays, or exactly how many marks have been given to these students, or what the formula being applied here even is. The NTA has claimed that a normalization formula has been applied. But students have challenged this in the Supreme Court, saying grace marks can only be given to a number of questions that may be left unanswered in proportion to the loss of time. Some say 70 to 80 grace marks have been given. Some others say that it could be as high as 150. At best, this is being called arbitrary. At worst, 
students have called this a scam to allow a few students to get a backdoor entry. The union government has now told the Supreme Court that the grace marks to these students will be scrapped and that these students can choose to sit for a retest if they want on June 23rd. Now let's look at how randomly giving grace marks has impacted thousands or lakhs of students. Just look at this statistic. This year, 67 candidates have gotten 720 marks. That's the perfect score. Eight of these students are from a single examination centre in Haryana. Do you know how many students scored 720 last year? Just two. And the year before that, not a single student had managed to get 720. The highest that year was 750. Of the 67 candidates who got 720, 44 of them made it there because of the wrong physics answer and got grace marks for it. And this changes the whole equation of how even admissions happen. Earlier, students with around 700 marks would have gotten a rank between 200 to 300. Usually, a student with a score of 600 would have been able to get into a good college. But now, their rank has been inflated by almost 1 lakh. Listen to Keshav Karunakar, a parent of a student who is currently facing the brunt of the neat mess. She scored 695. Uh, last year, the rank at 695 was 600 odd. This year, this rank has inflated to 3,300. When there's a difference of even 0.5 marks, the rank jumps by as much as 200. To see which college a student is eligible for, they compare the marks list and the college allocation of the previous year. But this year, many students feel that the rank has gotten pushed by over 5,000. So basically, they have no idea which college they should choose at the counselling stage. And the cutoff too, is very high. Now the students have to either settle for colleges not counted in the top list, that is if they manage to get through, or those who can afford to will have to pay heavy donations to get admissions. And those who cannot will have to just drop out and try again next year. Because NEET exams happen only once a year. And now after preparing for so long, the wait gets longer and their plans get set back by at least a year. Can you imagine the stress that it puts the students under and the money it costs? For NEET coaching, the most economical coaching centre takes one and a half lakhs per year. A coaching centre with a fairly good reputation takes around four and a half lakhs. And students usually need around two to three years of coaching before appearing for exams. So you do the math of how much they've actually spent. There's been a growing demand to relook at the very idea of NEET in its current form. Let's take a look at what are the alternatives for NEET in its current form, either if it was to be scrapped or even modified. A disclaimer here, the options I'm presenting you with are not perfect, but they can be tweaked to offer a more equal platform. The first option is for medical admissions to happen based on the 12th marks of students. Since students come from different boards, that CBSC, ICC, State Board and IB, an equalization formula can be applied to create a common playing ground. Second can be state entrance exams. This is what was being followed before NEET was brought in and had a certain level of decentralization. This did come with certain complications, but it can be tweaked further to include one common entrance exam for medical colleges run by union government, like AIMS. Then the current form of NEET can also be tweaked. Many students we spoke to pointed out that a large part of the pressure they go through is because of the negative marking for wrong answers. This could perhaps be removed, allowing for only positive marks for correct answers. But the most important step to be taken is bringing education back to the state list from the concurrent list. Because look at the example of NEET itself. It's not just about the career of students, but also about public health system of the state and country. These decisions can be best taken by individual states based on their needs because the public health system in say Tamil Nadu and Kerala is very different from Bihar, Assam or even Gujarat. As is the case with many other issues, cooperative federalism could be a way forward here as well. Let's see where the need issue goes because it's a developing story and you can trust us to keep you ahead on every small development. Meanwhile, do tell me what you thought of this episode. You can also write to me 
at pooja at the newsminute.com with story ideas, comments, feedback, or just if you want to give me a shout out. Thank you for watching.